Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to Yoda Programming using Scala. <clears throat> in the last video, we basically finished our Tron game. I actually want to continue working on this, but we're not going to, we're now going to switch it up. So in the previous videos, we were developing this application using RMI, and what I want to do is I want to make two new versions of, well, a new version of our, of our server and a new version of our client that do this, and we're going to change it so they don't use RMI. So, copy, paste, is it going to allow me to do that? Um, <clears throat> let's call it Socketron Client, and then copy, paste, Socketron Server. Open the client, open the server. First thing, these methods go away, or the top, the traits at the top. We only needed those for our RMI. We're not going to be using RMI. I can remove all of the imports for RMI. We're going to call this socket, and it doesn't have to extend anything here over on the server side. We can do the same thing. I don't need any of the RMI code. Because I've just changed up my classes in significant ways, I'm actually going to clean the project. You can see that it's going through and rebuilding. What the clean does is it causes it to erase all of the compiled files and rebuild new ones. Okay, so what needs to happen in this new version? Well, we're going to make it so that instead of using the RMI, uh, instead of using remote method invocation, it's going to connect using standard sockets. Okay. Uh, and that's interesting to note that says that that has no errors in it. <clears throat> we'll see in just a second. There is no more server. Uh, this code here is going to change. Actually, let's control Z. Okay. Uh, it's still a uh, I'll put some question marks in there. And let's get rid of the other aspects that we're referring to RMI specifically in here. So because we're writing this as a standard networked application now, I need to have a uh, socket. And on the server side, what we're going to do is we're going to open a server socket inside of here. So instead of starting up a registry and connecting to the registry, we are going to create a new server socket. Um, <clears throat> and how about I go with 4444. We'll import that. Okay. And then I need to uh, basically wait for some connections. Now we have a method in here that we wrote previously that is intended to do connections for us. Uh, and it's synchronized on our clients. Our clients is a mutable buffer of player. The nature of our player is going to change a little bit here. We no longer have the Tron client. Instead, what we're going to have is a socket for each of our players. <clears throat> and we also need probably to keep track of streams. Well, um, and I'm going to go ahead and make an object. I'm going to wrap these things so that they're in object input streams and object output streams. That way I can serialize whole objects across. It'll make our lives a bit easier.
put in a carriage return there. Control Shift O to import those. Okay, and so this becomes a mutable buffer of player. Our server needs to sit here and accept on uh, the various players. So while clients is uh, clients dot size is less than two, what do I do? Well, I get a new socket. And once I have that socket, I'm going to pull open up the input stream and the output stream for it. So we will, uh, actually let's go ahead and how about I just call connect on sock. And so then this changes from the client to a socket. Because of the way we're doing this now, this no longer needs to be synchronized. Um, it doesn't matter. Where the RMI, the function calls could come in and they would happen across multiple threads and be in parallel. Here, this is actually a call being, ma being made from our main thread. Um, and so after it's done with connect, it's gonna come back here and wait for the next one. And we will have to come back to here and finish that off. So what do we get? Well, I don't need to do that check anymore. Turns out we're going to stop accepting connections. I do need, I just got a socket. So I need to make, to pull the streams off of that socket and wrap them up appropriately. So new object input stream buffered input stream of sock dot get input stream control shift o to import that and we'll make an output stream an output stream and the output stream import there okay and now instead of this first part we have sock OIS OOS okay so now the first player connects it calls to the connect method so I'm, I'm trying to reuse some of the code that we had written before it passes the socket in we open an input stream and an output stream to the socket and we're going to remember those store them inside of the player <clears throat> and then uh, we set up our players at the two locations that they had been before uh, same way we were doing before now this is going to change we no longer start game here uh, and we need to respond to our users, whereas with the RMI, this was being returned to them. Now nothing's going to be implicitly returned, so we have to be much more explicit about this. This method is being called. It's not giving anything back to them. Instead, I'm going to call a write int on the OOS. and then I want to make sure that I flush that. Okay, so after we have opened up the, the streams for the new player, we add them to our list, we write to that player their player number, and we flush it to make sure it goes, and then we wait for the next player. And then we'll do the same thing for the second player. Once we have done that with the second player, we're done uh, with accepting, so we jump out to this to-do, which is going to do what that code down here did, which is to call start game. Okay, so I need to, uh, but I call the start game, 
in here. And what did our start game do? Well, it was calling the players and telling them that sending them a message through RMI. Let's come back over to the client here and start talking about what needs to happen on the other side. So what is our server now? Um, instead of calling it server, how about we call it sock because it's going to be a socket. Uh, for now I'm going to hard code in this is localhost obviously for a real application we would like to have it so it goes to whatever machine the the person wants to connect to and then I need to open those same input streams and output streams actually since I already have that code over here copy paste do some importing okay now I have both of these and what I will immediately do is redint on the input stream because what did the server immediately do as soon as the server had this all open and had the new player added to the list so they sent that new player in it so I want to read that int off and that will be the player number okay now so we come back over to here and we've started the game and when we start game what this is set up to do initially is to give the each one of the players a countdown uh, is this still called clients yes so I need to run through each one of the clients and then send them another message so I want to now here's an interesting question and in the sense that we know how this is going to work to an excerpt to a certain extent I will go with uh, writing an int here um, actually let's not write an int I need to write an object and I want this to be a countdown of I. And you might ask, well, what the heck is a countdown? Well, I need to create some little types in here. So I'm going to create, and I'm going to use case classes for these. Uh, case classes, as my memory serves, are serializable. If not, we'll have to put that in there. No. Once again, I've been programming in C++ recently. Okay, so the countdown is a case class that takes an int, and so down here we can write that across. And you'll see why I want to do this in when we go over to the client side. But let's stay here for just a bit and look at what we need to do in, in the rest of this code. This all stays the same. Clients for each, we call move, which is a call up to here, which takes a single player. It's all happening on this side. Uh, the This moves them, it checks whether they die, blah, 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 that's all fine. Now we have this code down here, which needs to tell each one of the clients that a step was taken and send to them the entire mutable buffers. Okay, so I want to do the same thing that I did above and I want to write an object and the object that I want to write now is could actually be called case class step taken what is inside of a step taken well a step taken has two mutable buffers in it um, so P1 is a mutable, actually I don't care that much, let's go with sequence. Sequence of int comma int comma P2 is also a sequence of int comma int. 
Okay. So now what I can write down here is write object, and the object that I want to write is a step taken of P1, P2. We sleep and we repeat. Sleep, repeat, sleep, repeat, sleep, repeat. Okay. <clears throat> we'll have to, there's one minor little problem that we have in, in here, but we're getting close. Uh, OS dot write object game ends with the winner. Let's make a case class up here for case class game ends winner winner isn't it? Oh my goodness, and now this entire code compiles. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if it actually ran? Uh, well, technically it'll run, uh, most likely. We'll see when we actually start running it. What about this side? Okay, so we have these sockets. We read the first number, which was our player number. We have this panel. It's going to draw itself. Okay, turn our first error right here is turn left and turn right. Uh, and we also have these different methods down here that are never being called. Because what's happening instead is that we are sending things across our socket. So what should happen here? Well, it turns out that this is actually fairly easy. Just like we replaced our remote method invocations in the server with calls to write object, I'm going to do the exact same thing here. I am going to make this do the object output stream, write object, and then turn left of player number, write object, turn right of player number. So I will put inside of here case class. Turn left in uh, num is an int turn right does the same thing and once again now this code compiles but at least it Not showing many errors. Okay, there we go. Uh, but the problem is right now both sides are sending lots of messages to the other side, but neither side is reading them. So we're going to come back in the next and our last video in this series, and we will make it so that the uh, so that each one of the the client and the server is reading messages and calling the methods that we had been calling with RMI based upon the messages that are received through the sockets.